Welcome to Deal Closers with Annette Talee, where we focus on the deals. Our guests are real estate closers who will share in detail the whole process from finding a deal to closing it, as well as strategies and tips to help you do the same. Here is your host, Annette Talee. Welcome to another episode of Deal Closers. I am your host, Annette Talee, and my guest today is John Hoover. Welcome, John. Welcome. How are you? Good, good. I'm excited to uh, interview you today because we know each other personally. I go to John's Meetup and uh, I've been going for probably six months and it's a pretty cool meetup. So uh, congrats on that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're pretty happy with the, with the amount of people. We've been running a meetup for about four years in South Florida. Um, so yeah, we, we can't be happier. Yeah, it's, it's called Coffee with Investors. And it's really cool. It's a, is it the second Saturday of the month? Second Saturday of every month. Uh, we meet at the same coffee shop, uh, same time. And uh, I mean, it's a great environment. It's very, uh, it's not intimidating. It's very casual. You know, people drink coffee and uh, we have a pretty eclectic group of different people with different experiences. Half the room have never even bought anything. Uh, some of them don't even own their own home, but they, you know, they're curious. They want the knowledge. Uh, and so it's a really good place that people can gain that knowledge without feeling intimidated and they don't have to pay to come. They, you know, they can just come and get a cup of coffee. It's nice. Yes. I really, really enjoy it. And I've met a lot of people at your meetup that, that I now call friends. So awesome. So let me tell you a little bit about John. He graduated from Rowan University with a degree in management of information systems. While still in college, he acquired his real estate license and began began working with an agent even before graduating. A self blockchain techie, he uses his formal training in database coding and analytics and his competitive edge in real estate analysis. John currently has rental properties of 120 units spanning from both coasts, from Los Angeles to South Florida, with the bulk of his portfolio located in Missouri. After partnering in Domu Private Investments, John has worked on triple his portfolio with cash flowing units. When he's not investing or analyzing real estate, he enjoys basketball and cooking with his wife and daughter. Awesome. So John, uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and how you uh, got into real estate. Okay. Uh, well, actually I was born into a real estate family. Um, my mother got into real estate in 1984 uh, and she's still in it today. So as I was growing up, I learned a lot about the business and she was always playing, you know, Tony Robbins and Zig Ziglar in the car. So uh, I was kind of being primed for it uh, without even knowing it. And uh, then my sisters got into real estate and then their, hus their husbands, uh, they met at the real estate agency. So uh, it's been a family business um, and I actively sold uh, real estate. Um, actually, I, I, I left college uh, in 2004 to get my real estate uh, license and I actively sold uh, while finishing up my degree part-time from 04 to 07. Um, and then when the, the market crashed, I didn't have the clientele to withstand the market, but the rest of my family did. Uh, so I fell back on my degree um, as a data geek and got into the coding and the programming and the data analytics. Um, worked up in New York, and then I moved to Los Angeles. Uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, I had a job that didn't have a 401k, so I wanted to put towards my retirement. So naturally, I got into real estate uh, investing. Um, so I bought a property out in Los Angeles, which I still have in my portfolio. Um, and that was the start of it. Um, I wanted to continue to uh, invest. So, but the Los Angeles market had rebounded and I was pretty much priced out by 2012. So I needed a new place to invest. Uh, I knew the New Jersey real estate market where I'm from. Uh, but I also knew South Florida because that's where we vacationed. Uh, my mother's got a place in Palm Beach Gardens and my father has a place in Boca Raton. So uh, I knew the market, so I decided to invest there. Uh, I started picking up properties, single families, multifamilies, um, as far north as Port St. Lucie and as far south as Boca Raton. And I still have all of those properties in my portfolio today. Uh, and I was priced out of that market in South Florida since about 2015. Uh, there really hasn't been much meat on the bone as the market rebounded here. Uh, so I needed a new market and I ultimately chose Kansas City. Awesome. So did your family just sell real estate or did they also invest in real estate? 
they dabbled in the investing uh, more just for uh, the tax purposes, for the tax write-offs. Uh, they are not as active as I am, uh, but they are uh, real estate agents. Okay, cool. That's awesome. The Deal. All right, so tell me about the deal we're going to talk about today. Okay, uh, so the deal we're going to talk about today is a 24-plex uh, that we acquired in the Kansas City market. Awesome. So how did you find this deal? Well, I found this deal with handwritten letters. Um, I have a script that I have uh, that I write handwritten letters. It's pretty personalized. Uh, I do a lot of research on the people that I send to. Um, you know, some people like to cast a wide net with the yellow letters of the postcards. Uh, I like to call this spear phishing. Uh, I pick uh, the exact asset class that I want, and we focused on you know uh, 20 to 50 unit properties, and we found a great 24 plex. So I wrote him a handwritten letter that was pretty personalized, and uh, and it worked. Wow, that's amazing because I hear a lot of people yeah. spending a lot of uh, capital on sending as many letters as they can. And on the other hand, you are just researching your market and handpicking your, your, uh, your deals, right? Yeah, we, pro we probably send, uh, you know, maybe 100 letters at a time, but they're, they're very, very targeted and very, very, very specific. Uh, and it's very, very effective. Um, our, I think my response rate on, that, uh, on the first couple hundred were uh, in, in the high teens and low 20s. So we were getting a, a call or a response, uh, you know, one out of every five or six letters that we sent out. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we were happy with that. Yeah. Awesome. So do you have like a certain um, parameter that you look? I don't know if you want to share. <laughs> share. Uh, like, you know, people that own the property for a certain amount of time, like you have, a, I'm assuming, like a parameter. Well, what I look for is uh, a couple things. One, I look for the asset class, the, the land use code uh, from the tax records. Uh, I want it to be a larger multifamily. I don't want to go into the 100 unit complexes because then you're uh, competing with you know, institutional money and REITs and uh, the big boys that I really can't compete with at this point in my, in my investing career. Um, so I like to find that sweet spot of the you know, 10 to 60, 10 to 50, you know, 20 to 50 range. And because uh, I believe it's too large for your average investor, but too small for your, uh, your, 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 you know, your institutional money. Uh, so I really believe that it's an overlooked asset. So that's the first criteria that I look for. Uh, and then I look for how easy they are to find online. Uh, a lot of these owners will hide behind a CPA or an attorney uh, or a property manager. But a lot of the times they will have this asset in their own name. Uh, and that is the sweet spot right there because that tells me that maybe they're not as sophisticated as some of the other people, uh, which may result in me being able to uh, access that person easier. Because uh, if I can find out who it is, then I can get their address. I can get their, sometimes even their cell phone number uh, free online. Um, and you'd be surprised what you can find out uh, just from Facebook alone. Uh, so some of the letters that I've sent have been, have been very personalized. And as a result, it's been very effective. Amazing. Amazing. So what was the price of, of this uh, asset and what was the price per unit? Well, um, the, the there was no listed price. price. The listing price. Right. There was no listed price because it wasn't listed. Uh, so this mm -hmm. was off market. Uh, but we did end up acquiring it for uh, 500000 it was pretty distressed. Yeah, it, it was a pretty good deal, but uh, it also needed a lot of work. It was, it was very distressed. Uh, it needed a whole new commercial roof. Uh, so we had to put uh, $70,000 on a new roof. Um, and we are not even, you know, scratching the surface on what needed to be done. So uh, we got a very, very good occupied? deal. It was occupied. And uh, what the owner was doing is that he was essentially patching the roof every couple of weeks. Uh, that got him through the winters uh, of the property, but you know, it, ultimately when I got it, I, I, I knew that it wasn't going to last. Right. Wow. That's awesome. I, I love properties that need roofs because it's you know it doesn't scare me, but a lot of buyers are scared about it. So yeah. it's like it's good. Okay, that's awesome. So so what what was that? Five hundred thousand, twenty four units. That's yeah. 
really good. <laughs> That's very, very good. But uh, I mean, it, you know, there's a lot of money that needed to go into it. So the all in price is not 500. Okay, awesome. So how was that negotiation, negotiation with him? You know, you, did you start at a higher price? Did you go down? How did it go? Well, um, he actually wanted a lot of money for it. And I explained to him, you know, this, this, this asset is not worth what you think it's worth. It needs a lot, a lot of work. Um, he actually probably could have gotten more for it if he put it on the market. Um, but I don't think he wanted to deal with that. And I don't think he wanted to pay the realtor fees. So um, ultimately what had happened was, is he needed a number. I, I, I believe the number was he needed, you know, uh, $560,000. And I explained to him, I'm like, there's no way I'm paying 560 for this property, like with all the work that it needs. And he kept saying, I need 560. This is exactly what I need. I need 560. And eventually I got to a point in the negotiations where I realized it wasn't about the money. So I asked him, I said, well, okay, so what exactly is your pain point? Why are you so fixated on this 560? And he said, well, I spoke with my accountant and I'm not going to, you know, uh, do a tax deferred exchange. So I'm going to be paying a hefty amount on the capital gains. He's basically riding off into the sunset and he, de he decided after his calculations, he worked his way backwards as to what's the number that I need to retire because he was 60 years old and he said, I don't want to do this anymore. So I need $560,000. Well, that actually really helped me in my negotiating because then I realized, okay, if he needs 560, then we need to change the deal. So what I ultimately ended up doing was uh, I ended up having him throw in two single families and a duplex as well. Uh, so I ended up getting 28 units for 560 as opposed to the 24 units for 500. Uh, now these, these properties needed a lot of work as well, right? They needed, uh, they, you know, the singles were essentially shells and the, the duplex has foundation damage. So, you know, um, you know, these weren't exactly, you know, uh, bells of the ball. These weren't great properties as well, but uh, I was actually able to have him throw these in. And he actually threw up, a, he threw in a pickup truck as well. Uh, <laughs> I got a, a I, I got a 2006 uh, GMC Sierra uh, with 200,000 miles on it, which, you know, I use every time I'm out there. So that's yeah. awesome. So how do you get, you know, these owners to, to talk to you and to give you information because I try doing that seller financing and uh, you know, this lady wouldn't give me any information. Like she did not, like she wanted me to, to feed her all the information. How long was that process of negotiating? It was actually, it, it was actually, it was actually pretty long. It was over the course of uh, a couple of weeks. And what it was is at first I built rapport with them for, you know, we were talking, you know, we were talking about the town. We were talking about the people that we knew in common uh, we were talking about what he wants to do with the money. He said he wanted to go to Costa Rica. I told him I had just been there for a bachelor party and give him some tips. And, you know, we actually didn't talk about the deal itself um, for, uh, 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 you know, the, probably on the second or third meeting. Um, so, you know, I, I really wanted to build a rapport with him. I wanted him to feel comfortable with me uh, because ultimately I, you know, this was going to be a deal. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome advice because I guess you focus on the deal and don't get to know the person. So you want to build that trust, I guess. That's what you got to start yeah. with. Awesome. Absolutely. All right. So how did you pay for it? How did, did you finance it? Did you pay cash? What we ended up doing was um, we put up uh, 200000 and uh, we ended up raising with hard money 300000 so for people that don't know, what's hard money? Hard money, uh, well, it's, a, a, it's a, basically a, a, a private investor or an institution that will give you money very quickly uh, for a high percentage. Uh, so the, the, the percentage points will be anywhere from uh, uh, yeah, a, a, as low as 8, 9 I've seen now, uh, as high as 14 and you'll be paying points uh, up front, which is 1% of the deal. Uh, so we had to pay two percentage points, um, which was you know, essentially uh, $6,000. Uh, as it, it, It's essentially like a loan origination fee that you would get from a bank, but this is a hard money lender uh, origination fee. Okay, cool. And so, so what's your plan for the property? I, I, you mentioned that you are going to have to put a lot of money into it. So are, what are you planning to, to do with it? Well, the first thing we did was put a roof on. Uh, 
uh, that was uh, that was a, a, a big ordeal. So um, so we put uh, a brand new roof on, and now what we're doing is we are refinancing out the hard money lender, and we are going to put this on long term debt. And with the equity that we currently have in the property, uh, we are going to use that to fund the rest of the rehab. Uh, and we've gotten quotes, uh, you know, north of you know 140,000. Uh, that's going to be needed for the for the extensive rehabs that 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 we have coming up. So you bought it for 560, or I guess 500, just that 500. asset, and then you put 70. And how much are you gonna? How what's the value right now that you just changed the roof? Uh, well, I believe that the value is probably somewhere in the uh, six to six twenty range because you know we still have a lot of work that we have to do, um, but ultimately we're going to be in for somewhere around seven to seven ten, and the ARV is going to be uh, at the bottom eight forty, uh, and that's the analysis that we've had. We've had a couple analysis done, um, so you know it, it's probably going to be anywhere from eight forty, um, maybe as high as nine sixty nine seventy five. Okay, so, so what type, you are trying to, um, you know, you couldn't finance it initially because you wouldn't pass an, inf an inspection, basically. So you had to resort to hard money, correct? And pay correct. a higher interest. But was the roof improvement enough for you to get financing now? Yes. Okay, so now you're going to be able to get a loan. Is it going to be like a bridge loan, probably? Uh, no, we're actually going to go right to long-term debt uh, because what we were able to do was, uh, we had some money that we were able to uh, able to renovate some of the units already. So we have uh, about nine tenants in there now. I think we just put our ninth one in. Uh, so we do have money coming in. So it is, you know, it's not necessarily a stabilized asset, but it is. But an you asset were able that to raise produced. the rent. Yes. Okay. Got you. Yes. Okay. Awesome. And so, and what's your long term? Uh, or exit strategy? Are you planning to keep it? Are you selling it? The the exit strategy is there is no exit because we want to keep this thing forever because this thing is going to end up being a cash cow. Uh, I, I really, really, really believe that. I mean, this thing is going to just, I mean, it's going to just produce. It's in a great area where there's a high demand. Um, so I, I think that this thing is going to remain occupied at all times. So when you, ref, you said that you're going to refi. Right. When you refile, are you going to be able to pull all, all your money or are you going to have to leave some money in the deal? Uh, we're going to have somebody in the deal, but what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to uh, essentially fund the entire rehab. Um, so, you know, maybe once we're done the entire rehab, uh, we could probably refinance again and then get all of our money back out. Uh, you know, because right now I think we're going to be re we're going to be refining at uh, probably like a six or six twenty five valuation. Uh, but once it, once everything's completely done, we could probably refi at uh, a much higher valuation and then pull our money back out. Right. Because if you right. do, and I'm not, I'm trying to get my calculator, but it didn't work. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you got six, seven or oh, 500, sorry. And then you put 70, that's five to 70, but then your value, you said 625. So you, you have there some money to, to pay back to yeah. this uh, hard money. All right, and, and, awesome. to, and, to, and to also pay for the, uh, the renovations that are needed. Right, yeah. So are you doing a full uh, renovation inside in the apartments? Some of them need a full renovation because there was some roof damage um, or some water damage from the roof because uh, there's, a, there's a really bad snowstorm and we couldn't get anybody up on the roof to cover it and we had to wait for the snow to melt. Therefore, it melted in a few of the units. So there was some extensive damage done in some of the units. That's why we're, we're getting quotes north of 140, because uh, some of the units need to be just completely renovated. Uh, luckily, we don't have to do any mold remediation, because uh, we were able to take care of that as, a, as it was happening, because it was literally a slow drip coming down. So, so at least we're good on that standpoint. That's awesome. And so what were the rents when you took over, and what are the rents on this new... Uh, nine units that you occupied? So the rents when we took over were, I mean, these were, they were very low uh, just because the property was in such, such uh, distressed condition. Uh, we're anywhere from 375 to 450. Uh, and now uh, all of the rents are north of 500. So some of them are as high as 550, depending on the layout, because some of them are different, but we probably have an average rent of somewhere around 530 to 540. 
Wow. And are these completely renovated or are they just to... Some of, some, some of them are, but uh, uh, some of them actually didn't need a full renovation. Some of them just needed, you know, new flooring and paint, uh, which was great. Yeah. <laughs> you always like to see that. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, some of them needed uh, a lot more. But we were, I'm just happy that we were able to get nine online uh, before we go through the full renovation on the refi. Absolutely. You want cash flow coming yeah. in to help pay, you know, for all the, the interest, yeah. right? And, 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 you know, keep going. That's awesome. That's a, a great story. Uh, did yeah. you try to get him to give you uh, financing, the seller? I, I had mentioned it, but he had also told me that he was talking to another investor and the other investor was pressuring him for seller financing. So I, I really felt that, you know, going with a cash offer, uh, we were able to, I was, it actually helped me with the negotiation process. And I, it probably resulted in me getting those extra four units. Oh, and by the way, we sold those units uh, to pay for the roof. Oh, so you didn't keep them. You just yeah. flipped them. That's awesome. That's a great idea because you would, are, were they empty or were they occupied? Uh, they were empty. The duplex was occupied, um, um, but I, we actually still have the duplex in our portfolio, but the two singles we put towards the roof and they were empty. They were actually shelves. They didn't even have kitchens. Uh, they were just completely uh, empty. Expert tips. All right, so now we come to the part of the show where you are going to give me three expert tips. And so the tips that John is going to give me is how to find and negotiate a deal. Okay, so the first tip I wanted to give was um, the personal handwritten notes that we use. Uh, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's very, very, very effective. Um, and, you know, uh, when you personalize something, what we do is we handwrite everything. So, and, and I don't want people to use the uh, computer generated handwritten font because you can always tell that it's, you know, it, it looks like you're trying to pull a fast one, to be honest. Um, so what we do is we, you know, I wrote the first probably thousand letters and, until I realized that it's probably not my highest and best use. So we actually uh, hire somebody, you know, $15, $20 an hour. It ultimately ends out to be about a dollar a letter. Um, and they, 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 write the, they write the letter and then they put it in an envelope that does not have a return address. Um, and the envelope is handwritten. And I also send the letter to their home address, not the address that is associated with the LLC of the asset. So they are not getting this letter at their business. They are getting this letter at their home address, um, which has surprised a few people how I was able to get it. But I mean, yeah, people are. Why, yeah, why not a, are, a, return let, a return address? Well, uh, because I don't want them to know where the letter is coming from. Until they open it. Correct. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, and also I use card stock. So I use, it's not copy paper. It's not thin. It's actually a very, very thick letter. Uh, so it, it seems more uh, professional. So if you get, you know, a, a card stock handwritten letter sent to your home, I think most people are going to open that. Yeah, that is true. You know, I get, I get a lot of... Uh, you know, wanting to buy my properties and I'm like, just, ew. <laughs> right. exactly. exactly. But when you get a yeah. thicker one, a nicer one, you're like, okay, what is, you know, what of is course, like, people are always curious. Right. Okay. Second tip. Right. So the second tip is uh, don't overpay by any circumstance uh, because, uh, you know, I could have easily overpaid for this deal. Uh, but what I did was I found the pain point. You know, I realized that it wasn't exactly a, you know, um, a money issue with this guy. He wanted to retire and he had a certain, you know, uh, he had a certain number that he had to meet. So I was able to have him throw in extra, you know, extra assets as a result of it. So essentially the duplex and the two singles were essentially free. Um, so, you know, it, always, always find out exactly what the motivation is behind the seller uh, because it's not always about getting the highest dollar amount, you know, per door. Yes. All right. Yes. And the third tip. And the, the third tip is everything is negotiable. Um, and I mean everything. I, you know, the fact that I was able to negotiate a truck at the deal uh, is pretty awesome. Was that your um, idea or that, was that him telling you that? Well, he had asked me, he's, he said, uh, uh, he said, you know, do you know anyone that's looking to buy a truck as well? And I was like, no, like, but, you know, I'll take it. 
and uh, we were able to negotiate that in as well. So we got a truck for, for a very, very, very good deal. Um, so, it, you know, everything is negotiable. And, and as a result, you know, no two deals that I've ever done uh, off market have been the same. You know, there's, there's, you would be surprised at what you can negotiate if you can get creative enough. And don't be afraid to ask is, is included in that deal because if you don't ask, you'll never get it. That is, you know, that is so true. I am reading a book and I keep talking about it. I might sound like a broken record, but it talks about, you know, like asking and, you know, and I guess it doesn't talk about asking, but it made me realize that if you don't ask, you know, you are not, you're losing opportunities. So the worst case scenario is going to be a no, but then you ask. So why not? And he would never have thrown in the truck had I not asked. He would never say, hey, you know, why are you buying the property? Why don't I just throw in the truck as well? No, <laughs> of course. No one's ever going to do that. Exactly. You know, no one's ever, no one's ever going to say, oh, hey, by the way, uh, you know, I know, I'm glad you're buying this property off me, but, you know, I'm just going to throw in uh, two singles in a duplex as well just because you're a nice guy. No, that doesn't happen. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. That was awesome. Thank you so much. So uh, how can people contact you? Do you have social media? Tell us. We do. Uh, so you can find us at uh, Domu Investments, D-O-M-U Investments on Instagram uh, and also at domuinvestments.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for adding so much value to my audience. I'm very excited to have you and uh, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Bye bye. This was Deal Closers with Annette Tali, brought to you by Tali Investments. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. Our goal is to provide amazing value on your real estate journey. Connect online at www.taleeinvestments.com where you can find this episode and more. Did you like this episode? Subscribe, like, and share.